Tune in this Sunday on the Clean Energy Academy for a very special interview uh, with the inventor of the hydro hydrogen generator, Aquacure hydrogen generator, George Wiseman. So thanks so much for tuning into this video. It's a little bit different than our other call, live call announcements because this is a relatively special call and we're really encouraging people to come on the call. You really won't want to miss this one, guys. Um, George has invented this amazing machine, the AquaCure, and we have one ourselves uh, that we've been using in our home, in our family for about a year now. It has amazing, amazing benefits and effects, and this would be your opportunity to come on the call and ask any questions um, of the inventor. It's going to be uh, an interview put on by Tavon, and we're just going to share a little bit of a video here talking about the Brown's Gas Hydroxy AquaCure Generator. And as always, the link will be below this video to talk about how you can get on the live call this Sunday. Here's a video, I'll put this, uh, the, the link to this entire video in the description below as well, so you can watch the entire thing in length to see the last time that we had George on. It was an amazing show and um, people really loved it. Brown's gas is specifically the hydrogen, oxygen, water vapor, and electrically expanded water made by electrolysis in an electrolyzer specifically designed not to separate the gases. If you put a membrane in the middle where the where electrically expanded water, EXW, is formed, then it will not form. It's a, a plasma form of water, negatively charged plasma, that is formed from water in these electrolyzers. The electrically expanded water is water that has soaked up electrons until it's become a gaseous form of water that is not water vapor or steam. So you have this uh, electron-rich form of water that you're inhaling or putting in the water to drink, and that goes into your blood, and that charges your blood with energy, and that energy is what you need to help rebuild your body. This is where I'm concentrating now, and it's, it's absolutely astonishing. When I first got into Brown's gas, I didn't have any clue that there would be a health application. I was using the gas for combustion, in combustion for fossil fuels enhancement or combustion in a torch. But for some reason, some of my customers, uh, and one in particular I'm thinking of, actually bubbled the gas through water, and, and I have no idea why, and then he put that gas, uh, bubbled water, on a melanoma on his forehead. And, he, and that melanoma was gone, he kept changing out his bandages, in three weeks' time, it was gone. And it just so happens that that has been duplicated here, like that experiment has been done again in Germany recently. When I started inhaling the gas, I did so just to prove that it was safe. I didn't try to, uh, I didn't do it because I thought I was sick. I didn't know all the things, I just, I, it was just normal. So as I'm, as I'm listing off this litany here, just remember that I didn't really think I was sick. I thought I was, I thought I was healthy and this is just normal aging and that sort of thing. My personal to date rejuvenation. Okay, so as of this time, I'm nearly 61 years old. Uh, I now look like I did when I was 45, when the because uh, you can look at previous pictures and, and you can see. And also, I, I have to say, in addition to this list, the Browns gas really saved my life. It gave me my libido back. It was more invigorated. It, had, it just it, it's part your body is part of that process, that healing process, just invigorated all aspects of, of you. Exactly. So the first thing that disappeared was the psoriasis on my, wow. on my elbows, knees, and feet. Mm -hmm. I had thick peeling skin, and I grew up on a cattle ranch, so I, and I had lots of calluses and stuff like that. So I just thought that was normal. I thought that was calluses and what have you. I didn't realize it wasn't until that skin started to peel off like a snake uh, yeah. loses skin. And underneath was smooth, baby smooth skin. And it was, it was disconcerting, of course. Uh, but 
like having the skin peel off like that, but the result was absolutely amazing. And, and that's what convinced me to continue inhalation. The, the things that happen when you get enough hydrogen, you're first, you're, if you're not getting enough, your body shuts down as it, mm -hmm. as it has to, to preserve life. And when you're getting your hydrogen, then it, then it turns itself back on, including the stem cells, because that's what it takes to regenerate skin. In order to turn, turn those patches into actual skin cells, mm -hmm. your skin is full of all different kinds of things. You got your nerve cells and, and all kinds of things that are in there and all that regenerates and it all has to come from the stem cells. So you got your own stem cell therapy, which uh, uh, people are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for uh, right in your own body. It, you just got to get your hydrogen back in there. And then uh, the arthritis in my hands, I, I'd had pain in my knuckles and, and, uh, and I, I got full functionality and, and, no, and pain-free hands again. Mm -hmm. So that was another good thing. Uh, my tinnitus, I had, it was getting hard to hear people speak yes. with yeah. the loud ringing in my ears. And now I only get tinnitus a little bit when I get under severe stress. So it is a stress-related thing. So I pay attention to the, uh, to the stress thing. Um, neuropathies. Mm -hmm. I, I have been losing the feeling in my left palm and in the fronts of my, both my shins. The doctors didn't know why the fronts of the shins, but they said that the palm thing had to do with a nerve in my elbow. And, uh, and she touched it and it hurt and, and, and it was uh, understandable. But mm -hmm. the, uh, as I was doing it, I got full feeling back in the palm of my hand. And, and as that happened, then I realized suddenly that I had full feeling back in, my, in the fronts of my shins. Now wow. again... All of this, I just thought was normal aging. I didn't. I thought I was healthy, right? When I finally did get a doctor, they did a full um, uh, physical on me, and it, for the records and what have you. And mm -hmm. in the process, I said I have a heart murmur, and because mm -hmm. I've had one since I was a child. Mm -hmm. And he said, "No, you don't." <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was a surprise for me. <laughs> and uh, it, which brings me quickly to uh, my father. I gave him one of these machines. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that he was going in for heart surgery and his prognosis was poor because he wasn't telling anybody about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I just gave it to him because I wanted him to be around for a lot longer. And, uh, and so he started religiously in, inhaling the gas and drinking the water and he had his heart surgery. And when he came out, he healed so fast. The doctors, it was back. They, they couldn't understand it because they, they thought he may not even heal at all, but he just, yes, healed yeah. it. so it really helps on those sort of things. Okay. The body needs the hydrogen. But if you're not getting enough hydrogen, then what happens is the body starts to shut down what it considers to be extraneous systems that are not immediately life-threatening. So the first thing to go is your regeneration system, which is skin cells and that sort of thing. And then your immune systems, and there's a lot of different immune systems, but they start to go and then people get sick. And then your organs start to shut down. And at that point, it's, it's pretty much going to be game over. But yeah. as, you, as you have the hydrogen, then your organs start to recover, like my heart murmur regained, mm -hmm. and your immune systems come back online which again, that got rid of my warts. And then the next thing I noticed was that all my scars were gone. And I had quite a few scars on my, on my body. And are and these, my, these are old scars? Old sorry, scars these, yeah. from childhood, okay? And I hadn't done anything particular mm -hmm. to them. I hadn't put any oil on them or any soft or anything like that. I was just inhaling the gas and drinking the water. So the next thing that happened was my uh, muscles hardened. I was uh, actually that happened fairly quickly. I noticed mm -hmm. that suddenly I could uh, I had strength that I and and hardness that I didn't otherwise have before, but because I don't exercise and I spend a lot of time here in front of the computer and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and one example of something that happened was I was pounding a fence post with a with an improvised uh, a metal post pounder and I mm -hmm. sprained my shoulder. And normally I knew that would take about three weeks to heal. It was bad enough I couldn't even lift my arm. Yeah. Three, Days, three days, completely pain -free. It's like Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So when you inhale um, this 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 gas into the body, it's like it does a rework of your body from the inside out, all the way to the surface of your skin, so that even your skin regenerates. That's correct. And your body does that itself. All you're doing is giving the body the nutrition and energy it needs. <laughs> I've never, until you spoke the other day, I'd never heard of the word, or thought of it, it was dehydrated. Where now all of a sudden you're taking the hydrogen and that's what's actually... 
dehydrating a person. That's right. Right. So explain that a little bit more, because I, I thought that I it just like you know all of a sudden you just go. Thing. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, water is mostly hydrogen. Right. So when you're lacking in liquid water, they were thinking people's dehydrated. It can actually go into a prune if you uh, if you don't have enough water in your system. And most people don't drink enough water. But dehydration, real dehydration, in my opinion, is where you're lacking in hydrogen. And most of the people uh, are lacking in hydrogen. Not even if they're drinking enough water, because you don't get your hydrogen from your water generally. You get your hydrogen from your food mostly. And so hydrogen is a food. You have, to, you have to consider hydrogen as a food, and it, that's important later as, you, as we're talking on things. But what happens is in your, starting at the enzymes in your mouth, you start breaking down the food until it gets down through all the chemical reactions into your colon. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the bacteria live that break the food apart into the hydrogen Sorry, and carbon and uh, whatever else the food is comprised of. So you've got hydrocarbons uh, that, that you're eating, plants and meat and what have you and that's where that then the hydrogen that breaks off of that goes into your directly into your bloodstream through your colon walls now you can't breathe in hydrogen like you breathe in oxygen because hydrogen doesn't exist in the air if there's hydrogen free it just goes to God <laughs> immediately rises so the um, the hydrogen is important it's your most important nutrient so people they concentrate on supplements of uh, calcium and magnesium and selenium and iron. A person should be thinking that when you're dehydrated, and especially now because you don't have enough hydrogen, you're dehydrated. So why do we ha not have enough hydrogen? Mostly it's because of antibiotics. This miracle of modern medicine, which is definitely awesome, kills the bacteria, the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria in your guts. And you have bacteria in your food, uh, sorry, um, antibiotics in your food, uh, and chemicals that kill back, uh, bacteria in the food and just bad food, frankenfoods and, and stuff like that, all of which do not enhance the uh, biodome in your, in your guts, biodiversity. Bio and it turns out that the hydrogen bacteria, hydrogen producing bacteria are particularly sensitive to this sort of thing. So virtually the entire population who has received antibiotics even since they were a child are lacking in the hydrogen producing bacteria. So they, they end up just not being able to have enough hydrogen. People who are ill or have been chronically dehydrated, as in lacking of hydrogen, mm -hmm. have either uh, compromised energy generation systems and or have depleted their energy reserves. The Brown's gas gives not only the hydrogen, but the energy at the same time to heal. So that's why it's very important on this, that the hydroxy is the, is the way to go if you want your maximum therapeutic benefit. So in my experience now, people sick are sick, aging, and dying from dehydration. Literally, not enough hydrogen. Brown's gas actually helps bodies heal. It doesn't heal itself by itself. It's not a drug. It's a nutrition. It's a food. And what happens is you give the body what it needs and it, the body heals itself. So people using Brown's gas heal quickly, seldom get sick, and regain and retain a youthful appearance and vigor. The traditional health industry has been missing the importance of hydrogen for centuries, and now the hydrogen industry that's coming up is still missing the importance of the electrically expanded water. The electrically expanded water, again, we have a situation where, yes, you're getting the hydrogen, and that's good, but you also need the, the electrons, the uh, bioavailable energy. People who are sick generally have compromised uh, energy generation systems and or have depleted their energy reserves. So when you give the electrically expanded water, which is a bioavailable form of uh, uh, electrons, with the hydrogen, everything happens quicker. This is the next generation of hydrogen for health. <laughs> There's, there's a, a huge number of factors that, that go into electrolysis design and what you're going to do with it. The basic concept uh, comes down to whether there's a membrane or not. If you, are, uh, if you have a membrane that's separating the electrodes, that in this case we're going to call it the cathode, which is the negative, and the anode, which is positive, you have a membrane that's separating those two, then you're not going to get Brown's gas. You're going to get 
a hydrogen off your cathode and oxygen off the anode, and that's the traditional electrolysis, uh, Faraday electrolysis, if you will, that has been done for a couple hundred years, and that uh, you can't make Brown's gas that way. It doesn't yeah. make the electrically expanded water. The electrically expanded water is only made in electrolyzers that don't have a membrane. And this effect is when the anions and cations are going back and forth across between the plates to, uh, to balance the electrolysis, some of those electrons are attaching onto the water and the water is expanding and, and becoming the plasma form of water, which is electrically expanded water. Mm -hmm. And so it only happens when you have a, the, no membrane. Now, now, the most efficient type of way to do it has to do with plate spacing and electrolyte density and temperatures and waveforms and, and mm -hmm. pulsing, mm -hmm. yeah. all yeah. kinds of things that a person gets into. Uh, but, the, but the basic idea is that you have to have no membrane between the electrodes. So knowing what Brown's gas is helps us design electrolyzers that make a higher quantity and quality of gas. We want as much of that EXW as possible. So what I am is, a, is an expert in building electrolyzers, building and optimizing electrolyzers, Brown's gas electrolyzers in specific, or what's also known as hydroxy or HHO. There's now easily over a thousand scientific studies and, and gathering more every day yeah. uh, on just about every different kind of ailment. But back in, so then in uh, 2016, early 2016, I actually videotaped myself first inhaling the Brown's gas. I, I was kind of busy at, the, at that time when I first learned about it in, 20, uh, in uh, 2015 of December because my wife was on her last legs uh, dying at that time from uh, severe lupus which it turns out is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about helping people get well. Yeah. Because in 2016, I started inhaling the gas and by mid 2016, I developed, I developed the AquaCure machine, which is much uh, more advanced. It's like the uh, Ford F-150 to a uh, Model T <laughs> as it is opposed. Yeah. It's still not a Lamborghini or anything because I'm trying to uh, uh, keep the price down yes, for yeah. the, the average consumer. So. Um, anyway, it wasn't too long after I'd said I, about inhaling the gas, and this was actually still with an ER50 uh, uh, machine yeah. that this happened. A woman who had lupus reported in three weeks' time her lupus symptoms were gone. That is amazing. Wow. And my wife had, had battled the lupus for 10 years, and the last three years of her life, it was so bad, her organs were failing, and her, she was so weak. She couldn't even roll over in bed without assistance. So I became her 24 seven caretaker. So I was, I pretty much lost my business and, and everything and what have you, because I couldn't work and care for her at the same time. Yeah. So after she passed in March of 2016, I dived back into my work as soon as I could breathe again a little bit and, yeah. uh, and started doing this. And then it was, it was a severe blow on my heart again, when uh, the very thing, uh -huh that I'd been experimenting with since 1986. Yes. Yeah. I was one of the worldwide experts in that God had given me the, uh, the, the clues in 1996 yeah. would have made this woman healthy. And I, I still have her with me today. Wow. So that is why I am very passionate at making sure that other people don't go through this severe thing that happens with, the, uh, with, with all these ailments that are out there. 